Well, it's finally come down to the final four models of my Cruel Boys army. At this point, I'm starting to get a little nervous. But nervous in a good way, like how musicians get a little nervous before they go on stage. When painting a bigger unit, it's easier to hide mistakes or parts that didn't quite turn out too well. But with a single model, it's all out in the open, especially hero models. In today's video, I'm going to focus on just doing the best job I can on the Merc Knobs Belgebana. Starting off with the banner's biggest part, the big scary face. Corn Red is slowly becoming one of my favourite paints to use because it starts off a lot brighter than you think it's going to be. But it dries much darker and looks really good. With the red drying, I started on the other metal faces. For the first time ever, I'm using Rune Lord Brass, the paint that I had gotten with issue 2 of Warhammer Imperium. It's a good colour that has the right mix of not being too dark or too bright. With the pole, I went with Bane Blade Brown. I usually go with Mornfang Brown or even Rhinox Hide, but I wanted it to have a much lighter tone for the wood. For the silver parts, I went with Lead Belcher. There are a lot of spiky bits on this banner and there's a good few rivets as well. So at this stage, it's okay if it gets a little bit messy on the red parts, you can cover that up once it's dry. When the metal parts are all dry, it's time to start shading. I learned from painting the red shoulder pads on the gut rippers and the bolt boys that Agrax Earthshade is a great shade over corn red. It darkens it even more. But when you don't overuse it, it turns out really nice. There's also a lot of parts on the face that can cause a lot of pooling of the shade, so make sure to watch out for it. Gulliman Flesh shaded the bronze faces. I think I've used Gulliman Flesh on more bronze colours than actually flesh colours. It just works really well. For the Merc Knobs trophies, the heads were painted with Rackard Flesh and the skull was based with Zandri Dust. When it came to starting the highlights on the face, I looked at the reds I had. Wild Rider Red looked like the obvious choice, but then I remembered that I tried this on the arrow flights of the Bolt Boys and it was much brighter than I wanted it to be. The choice then was Wazdaka Red and I started highlighting the features on the nose and the eye area, but also along the edges. Stormhole Silver was used to highlight all the silver parts and the tips of the teeth. Stormhole Silver was also used on the bronze faces, highlighting the most prominent parts and their edges. What a combination this is for the bronze faces. Rune Lord Brass Base, Gulliman Flesh Shade and highlighted with Stormhole Silver. If it works, it works. I went with Mornfang Brown for the hair on the heads. I was going to go with a grey colour, but it would have been too similar to the skin colour I went with. The last base coat to be applied was Gene Stealer Purple on the tongue. I was really close to doing the tongue a different colour because I thought it was meant to be a metal part, but it's actually a real severed tongue of a Meyer Drake. With that drying, I shaded both heads, one with Antonian Camel Shade and the other with Gulliman Flesh. The tongue was next shaded all over with Caribou Crimson, followed by a highlight of a 70-30 mix of Jean Sealer Purple and White Scar on its features. The banner was finished off with a final highlight of Wild Rider Red that was applied on the highest edges on the face. This final highlight really makes the features pop. With everything finished, I'm actually really happy about how the banner turned out. The banner can be an important part of visually for any army and this one has a lot of different parts that could have made the colours clash a bit. But this is a good start for the Cruel Boys hero models. I had a painting plan before I started and it worked out perfectly. And now I'm feeling just a little bit less nervous about painting the last three remaining models in the army.